It's just the three of us doing everything. I was in law, Shand was in finance, Tom was in software engineering. I think, again, broadly speaking, we all felt a little dissatisfied with those career paths and, and felt a, an instinct that something a little more creative and hands-on would appeal to us. And all three of us came together and, and sort of dreamt this thing up. Well, so uh, Wonderbird Spirits is a grain to glass distillery in which we make gin. We have a single product, which is our gin number 61. It's our flagship product. It's made out of fermented rice, which comes from the Mississippi Delta. We're one of about three gins in the world made from a rice-based spirit. The others happen to be in Japan. We use 10 different botanicals to imbue our gin with its flavor profile. Well, we specifically landed with Two Brooks Farms and we're, we're glad that we did. It was kind of just a serendipitous connection. So about this time last year, we got a call from three men we'd never heard of before asking about distilling rice into gin. And, you know, we knew nothing about it, so we decided to have them out to the farm. The rice we use for Wonderbird is called Jasmine. It has a low amylose content, which means it's very sticky, which means it breaks down quicker in their mash. A jasmine has something called 2-AP, 2-acetyl-1 pyrrolein. It's a chemical compound that you would find in popcorn, buttery popcorn. It's that buttery smell you get. The reason gin is what we chose is because it really gave us a lot of creative latitude as far as compared to other spirits. There are fewer rules or restrictions around what we can use in that spirit and it was always important to us to be able to make a product that featured things from here. Wonderbird is a name that we came to after a great deal of discussion and exploration. Names are really hard in a democracy of three. It's such an integral piece of our business. One day I went over to Tom's house to pick up some keys and saw that he had a very well leafed Birds of Mississippi book on his coffee table. And I said, have you been studying birds for the name? And he said, yes. And I said, because I have to. Wonder Bird is a fictional thing, but it is it's supposed to evoke a sense of optimism, hope, positivity, new beginnings. Uh, the same thing that birds have symbolized for cultures for hundreds and thousands of years. Our logo symbol, you know, we all agreed on the fact that we wanted an aesthetic for all of our branding and including the way our building looked, the way our bottle labels looked, the way, you know, everything that kind of represents this company. We wanted an aesthetic that was sort of minimalist, clean and timeless. We wanted a gin that was still a traditional gin, but something that was more approachable, not super juniper forward like most gins out there are. Most people associate gin with tasting like a Christmas tree. And for a lot of people, that's the turnoff. We wanted something that was more approachable, yet still traditional, still identifiable as definitely gin. We wanted something that wasn't sweet, but was kind of a good balance between savory and sweet. But we wanted to add some of the flavor elements, flora from this area to show the terroir of Mississippi. So that brought in the pine needles, the red clover grows in our field. So that was why we experimented with that. As far as we know, we're the only gin distillery in the world using red clover in the gin. We've gotten a great reception. And local especially, we've gotten a lot of local support. At least once a month, someone comes in here and says it's the best gin they ever had. So that's a winning comment from uh, where we stand. Great. Okay. Great. Cool. Thank you. Great.